Yo, what up, street guys? Eric Kim. All right, some uh, some turbo thoughts. So this one is the difference between happiness and pleasure, novelty, etc. So it looks like in America and everywhere else in the world, everyone wants to be quote quote happy. I think. Uh, or not to be bored or not to be miserable um, or depressed or whatever. So first and foremost, like what is it that Americans strive towards? I think most Americans either to buy that new car or to uh, buy a house. If you already have a house, to renovate it, make it nicer, buy more stuff, I don't know, whatever. Um, the funny thing is I think what Americans are all about is pleasure seeking, fashion, uh, comfort, novelty seeking, thrills, travel, etc. And it is a little bit deceiving in so far much as I think the carrot and stick of capitalism, consumerism is the promise of happiness. Now, what is the promise of happiness? Once you get the Lambo, once you get the convertible, once you get the, I don't know, whatever, the Rolls, uh, the, the Tesla, then you could, you're going to be happy for the rest of your life, right? Um, we all know this is not true. <laughs> uh, yet, low-key, we still do pursue it. Um, I think the big issue is nowadays, everyone is just so... Um, like cooped up like sick animals i mean just like just look at someone's skin tone right like when's the last time they got natural sunlight in their skin do they have a tan do they not in today's world to have um a tan is actually the new um modern day flex it's actually funny because even um if you're like a laborer or you know work gardening typically most dudes are all covered up anyways so i think in the past to uh to have a tan or a farmer's tan, whatever, was a sign that you're poor. But now it's a sign that you're rich, especially if your back is tan. <laughs> it's like, how are you rich enough to afford to just walk around, just like sunbathe and expose your back? That's actually a very uncommon sight because if you are a farmer, you might have a farmer's tan because you're in the field all day, right? But a farmer ain't finna be working in the fields, <laughs> topless, <laughs> you know, flexing his muscles or her muscles. Then again, if you're a woman, you can't walk around topless. Uh, the sexism of uh, modern day society. Uh, but anyways, so, but we's, we's the new Spartans, right? Uh, and I don't think what we should be doing is seeking happiness. I think happiness is not the goal. Even our best friend Aristotle said, what is one thing that all men seek is happiness for the sake of happiness? I don't think so. I think it's actually, it's what we want is we want greater risk, we want greater challenge, and we want greater thrills. Um, I could imagine that an ancient Greek or ancient Spartan, whatever, their greatest happiness, or an ancient barbarian, their greatest happiness was in the thrill of combat or the promise of a combat uh, kind of more towards uh, martial societies, etc. Um, uh, like I, even I remember when I was a kid, right? Like I was so into like samurais fighting with swords or medieval medieval armor, fighting with the armor, etc. Um, so if you ever want to get like a, get hyped or amped or get your vigor or get your test up, right? Watch a samurai film. Anything by Kira Kurosawa is good. Uh, medieval knights fighting. What is that one? New one that came out. That was pretty good with the Matt Damon. That was actually Ridley Scott. That was that was actually quite quite good. Um, you can just fast forward. Just don't watch any of the rest of me. Just watch the final uh, fight scene. I kind of like the idea that like at the end of the day, one's courage is like mano a mano, hand to hand combat, not with some sort of uh, cowardly guns or uh spear uh sorry the arrows it's funny because even the you know watch movie 300 to be an archer was the ultimate coward thing to do because you was like protected by the fortress and you didn't actually have skin in the game whereas if you're doing hand-to-hand -hand combat it's the ultimate um 
putting your putting your your skin your life on the line even um Nassim Taleb had an interesting thought is uh, interesting ethical thought if let's say um, talking in the context of America right like you know people voting for war or, you know, go to war with Iraq or whatever one should have at least one blood related kin who will actually be on the front lines of battle then it will show that the, the real courage like for example uh, now that I got a son right like is the risk of my son dying worth some sort of international battle no so like why would I ever promote war and I think war is a more of a I, I like to think of war nowadays as more of a metaphorical concept where I'm not I'm very anti-war where people are actually getting killed and stuff like that that's that's quite uh, quite empty uh, I'm kind of more for like a, kind of this metaphorical war where even combat like even when I'm at the gym and I'm attack you know, attacking the bar or attacking you know when doing squats right I almost imagine like I'm gonna kill the bar or I'm gonna kill the iron or the whatever the rack um, or kill gravity. I ain't finna kill no human being. I, I love people. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want nobody to die. That's so sad, right? Especially once you gotta get a kid, right? I think the ultimate tragedy is when a, a child dies. I mean, it's it's actually really, really quite try. Like, even if you had the world's worst enemy, evil villain dude, and the dude had a daughter or a son or a kid, and the kid dies, like, I would feel infinite compassion for that individual i mean honestly at the end of the day any human being with a child typically doesn't even have to be blood really it has a child you know adopted whatever it doesn't matter foster has infinite courage so once again uh let's think happiness ain't the goal it's something else